Hello students, Professor Sean here. So in these videos that I've been making is how can we use Excel or pretty much spreadsheets in general to uh, collect data into tables and record them and to actually do simple functions like graphing and calculations. For this particular video, I'm gonna show you how we can make calculations. So we had this unknown metal and different pieces of it in lab, we measured the volume and mass and we recorded it on this data table that we used. Um, so now the whole point is we want to identify this unknown from different possibilities. And one way that we can do that is we can use the physical property of density. Now, if we know that density is equal to mass divided by volume, we can easily, and I'm going to actually move this over here, we could easily do a calculation of density right next to it. So we can just put D there for density to make it fast. And um, rather than me do it by hand, I can use Excel to go really fast for this. So how can I do that? I can hit the equal sign on my keyboard, and I know that it's mass divided by volume, so I can take the first trial and then I can divide it, its mass of the first object by its volume. And I could hit enter. And what it does is it records that density for me right away. And now what I can do is I can get the corner of this cell, click and drag it, and it'll cal calculate the density for all of three of these trials. And you can always check because in the first one, what it's doing, it's taking um, the mass, which is B2. So this is cell B, and this is row 2, and dividing it by A2, which was the volume. If I go in this cell, I'll see that it's doing uh, B3, which is this particular mass, divided by A3, this volume. So this is the density for all three trials, and we see they're all pretty similar. Now if we we're gonna follow sig fig rules. Again, I can highlight all this data here and make sure that I have three sig figs, because three sig figs divided by four or five would give me three sig figs. So to do that, I would decrease, oops, sorry, I would decrease it to three sig figs. So now I have three sig figs. Now again, I like to center everything, so I'll go ahead and center this, maybe highlight it, and there you go. If I want to make it more look like, a, again, a table, I can do that. Now, the other useful thing is I can do other types of, I'm going to increase this cells, right, the spacing here, yeah. The other thing is for these three trials, I have the three different densities, but maybe I want to calculate the average, okay? And maybe I want to calculate the standard deviations. Okay, so I can do, and we know how to do average. It's easy. Just add it all up, and in this case, divide by the number of trials. It would be three. It would be really easy because there's only three. It, Excel and spreadsheets in general are really good for simple calculations when you have large amounts of um trials. This one's a little bit easier, but I still want to show you how you can do that. So let's say I wanted to figure out average. I could hit equal and start typing in average, and you'll see that it'll come up. And once it shows this comma, I can highlight these to get an average and then just hit enter, and it'll give me my average density for all of these. Standard deviation. Click on the cell where you want to place it, hit equals, start typing standard deviation. You see that there's the most recently used or the most common standard deviation. That's typically the one you want. The P stands for um, an entire population where S is typically a, just a sample of the population. And that's what this more common, uh, common one is. You typically don't get an entire population. So we'll go ahead and do that, enter it. And you want to make sure that you have the correct number of uh, precision on this. So we should go to the hundredths for this. So I'm going to decrease my decimal, go to the hundredths. And now I have the average and standard deviation. 
another thing you might notice is that um, the volume and the masses and even the densities, they're not in any type of order. They're kind of random. If I go over here, you see where this little funnel is where it says AZ? I can sort this and make it go from smallest to largest. Now, what it's doing, it's saying, well, do I want to expand the selection because it sees that I have these two other columns? And I do because I want to make sure that the volumes correspond to the correct masses and density. So I'm going to hit sort. And what it does now, it's sorting based on increasing volume. Now, you see the densities are a little bit off, right, because it's human error. But it's sorted the masses to go with the corresponding volumes. Didn't change the average or the standard deviation because there wasn't any change. Now, if I actually change one of these values, let's say, so let's say I made this volume a 5. You'll see that because this function is still here and it's relating to these cells, that the deviation and the standard changed as well. So that's another cool thing about Excel, it will do that for you. There's other types of calculations, but right now, for the most part, these are the most important, the simplest ones. There's uh, another video that we can do for those as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and stop this for your average and your standard deviation. Thanks for watching.